Oh, damn it! The OnePlus 10T doesn't have an alert slider. Why OnePlus? Why? Answer to that question and more I'll try to cover in this comparison review of the OnePlus 10T and the iQOO 9T. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track and Take English. Let's go. Now I want to start off with a confession. Unfortunately, I dropped the, you know, iQOO 90 and there's a ding on the metal frame and crack on the rear glass as well. Therefore, all of our B-rolls will have a bit of crack. We'll try to avoid that as much as possible, but it's unavoidable. Glass is glass and glass breaks. And that is why don't be as careless as I am. If you're spending this much money on a phone, do use the case that you get within the box of both these phones, actually. Now talking about the build quality, you've got glass on the back, glass on the front and a metal mid frame on the iQOO 90. Now we don't know if there is any specific short sensation or Cornigola glass protection on the rear and uh, of course there is short sensation alpha on the front which is apparently the latest version of short sensation glass and apparently it's more rigid and far more resistant to scratches. On the OnePlus 10T though, you get Cornigola glass 5 on the front and Cornigola glass 5 on the back and a plastic mid frame which is is definitely a letdown compared to the really nice matte mid frame on the iQOO 90. This one's got this glossy finish which I'm not really a fan of. Anyway, one of the things that iQOO has done with the iQOO 90 is actually it has made it wider and the OnePlus 10T is of course thicker uh, than the iQOO 90 and when placed on a table what I noticed is that the iQOO 90 doesn't wobble as much as the OnePlus 10T does. So overall what I felt is that both are really big phones but the OnePlus 10T definitely feels slightly more comfortable because it's got a curved back and not as wide of a frame. Now let's talk about the design of these two phones. You've got this legend variant on the iQOO 90 with that signature BMW, you know, stripes and this dual tone colors, which includes that black top, you know, camera module part and the white part on the bottom. And of course, you also get a completely black variant, which is also again a dual tone variant. I like that variant more. I think that the iQOO 90 is definitely a better looking design than this jade green, you know, extremely glossy design of the OnePlus 10T. And this one's also a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Uh, it does show fingerprints on this, uh, you know, back panel. What I noticed is that the OnePlus 10T actually looks a lot like the OnePlus 10 Pro with this camera module as well, but kind of worse really. But then again, looks are subjective. Some people might like the OnePlus 10T's design, some people over, of course, the iQOO 90's design, but I genuinely prefer the iQOO 90's design over the OnePlus 10T's design. Now, when it comes to ingress protection, you do get IP54 on the OnePlus 10T and IP52 on the iQOO 9T, but of course, you don't get a flagship grade IP67 or 68 rating like you do get on the, you know, Pixel 6a or the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. Now, the one big problem with the design of these phones is that you get a USB Type-C port at the bottom and it's a Type-C 2.0 port. Now, for phones like these, which are targeted at performance enthusiasts, to give USB Type-C 2.0 is definitely a huge letdown, primarily because USB 3.0 is better, far more, uh, you know, newer technology. And you also get support for HDMI out directly from USB 3.0. So if you want to stream, then that definitely definitely helps a lot. So yeah, bad decision iQOO and OnePlus. Now one of the things about the iQOO is that in its latest phones, it has started providing an infrared blaster. So this iQOO 90 also has an infrared blaster. On the flip side, the OnePlus 10T doesn't have an alert slider. OnePlus is really keen on losing out on its identity for some odd reason. It's just very, very disappointing that OnePlus is going down this route. OnePlus fans must definitely be disappointed with this move uh, that the company has taken. Now, unlike OnePlus, which loves to remove features, we only love adding more videos on this channel because of the love and support that we get from you. So don't forget to hit the like button and maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm. And if you're somebody who, are, who is new here for the very first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified wherever we put out an awesome new tech video. Now, OnePlus claims that this is because it's got a newer chip, more powerful internals, uh, you know, faster charging, battery, all of those things. But I think that's just hogwash. I think you can add an alert slider. OnePlus has been doing that forever. It probably will add like a 0.2 millimeter thickness. It's already really thick. So I don't know. I mean, they could have gone ahead and done it. Now coming to the displays on these phones, both are massive 6.7 inch panels 
AMOLED panels of course with full HD plus resolution and 120 Hertz refresh rate as well. Now the distinction between these two is that uh, you know the OnePlus has an E4 AMOLED whereas the iQOO 90 has an E5 AMOLED and the OnePlus comes with 10 bit color which is of course a wider color gamut whereas uh, you know the iQOO 90 comes with 8 bit color panel. Now in daily usage what I notice is that these are really good panels with professional grade color tuning as well with the DCI-P3 color gamut available for you at your disposal especially when you go into the settings page and change it from the display settings. Both have a very good a very low delta E as well so you can actually do color correction work and all of those things especially stuff like you know editing photos on the display itself it's very good. But since the OnePlus 10T has a 10 bit color output it definitely feels more vibrant in daily usage especially when you look at the two new live wallpapers that you get with the OnePlus 10T they look really really good and the dark uh, you know AMOLED uh, display looks much darker on the OnePlus 10T compared to the iQOO 90. And you can tell the difference between the vibrancy of both these panels especially when you're watching HDR content on YouTube and Netflix and I'm glad to report that both these phones offer HDR playback on both these apps. But apart from that vibrancy bit the way the HDR tuning has been done on both these panels is very very similar. I really couldn't tell the difference between the you know high points of the brightness or the low points of the darkness as well. It's actually very well tuned uh, with very good control over the overexposure as well. Now regarding the brightness I know for a fact that the OnePlus 10T has 950 nits of brightness in regular usage and the iQOO 90 has 1500 nits of peak brightness in HDR but I don't know the HDR levels on the OnePlus 10T or the regular brightness levels of the iQOO 90 but I'm taking a wild guess that the iQOO 90 is at about the 800 nits mark because it's only slightly lower uh, in terms of brightness compared to the uh, you know OnePlus 10T. Also what I noticed is that the auto brightness uh, when you are using auto brightness on both these phones which I generally do the iQOO 90 is far more conservative and compared to the OnePlus 10T which tends to have a, you know a higher brightness output compared to the iQOO 90 when you're using it inside indoors or even outdoors for that matter. Now coming to the 120 hertz refresh rate on both these phones both are extremely fast and smooth but they're not LTPO panels but you do get variable refresh rate. What I noticed is that they can switch between 30, 60, 90 and 120 hertz depending on what content is playing on your screen and it happens very well. Uh, it's implemented very well on both these phones. Now the touch sampling rate on the iQOO 90 is 360 hertz. The instant touch sampling rate on the OnePlus 10T is 1000 hertz which actually goes to 1200 hertz on the iQOO 90. Now these are basic numbers what I notice is that both these phones are fantastic with touch responses but just because the animations are better tuned on the software of the OnePlus 10T it feels slightly smoother and you know more responsive but when you're gaming you really cannot tell a difference between the two both are equally good. There's one inclusion on the iQOO 90 which sort of sets it apart from the OnePlus 10T and that is the V1 Plus chip which can apparently do motion interpolation or MEMC when you're doing gaming which means that adding extra frames to improve the frame rate of the games where even when it's not available. On games like PUBG New Estate, BGMI and Genshin Impact you can use the game mode to do the game uh, frame interpolation and it sort of improves the frame rates as well or so to speak because I couldn't see the difference really between the 60Hz and 90Hz and when I I switched on the developer settings you know show refresh rate option it didn't really jump to 90 hertz when i was playing the game uh, when i was playing bgmi so i don't know what really is happening but uh, it feels smooth it, it is smooth uh, by default even the OnePlus 10T is smooth by default so I don't really know if the motion interpolation is helping. Now one part of the equation is haptic feedback as well and OnePlus, Oppo and Realme phones now the best phones that they offer now come with O Haptics and O Haptics is a fantastic haptic feedback engine with absolutely tight responses. The haptic feedback on the OnePlus 10T is better than the iQOO 90. That's that's what you need to know. Now both these phones come with an optical in-display fingerprint scanner. They're extremely fast to unlock. No problem whatsoever. They feel secure as well. My only grouse is that they could have been placed slightly higher which seems to be a problem with most of these phones that are launching these days. Overall when you look at the display I think that OnePlus has a slight lead over the iQOO 90. Now also a part of the multimedia experience is the audio experience on these phones and the stereo speakers on the OnePlus 10T are better than the iQOO 90. What I notice is that you get a far louder sound signature with just more dynamic and of course it's also far more bass heavy because you also do get Dolby Atmos on the OnePlus 10T. Take a listen for the speaker sound uh, side by side.
But audio through Type-C dongles, because you don't get a headphone jack on both these phones, despite the fact that they're extremely thick, is very, very good on both these phones. They're equally comparable. So yeah, you shouldn't have any problem over there. Now, when you look at the specs of both these phones, they're very similar, except for the cameras, where iQOO definitely has better specs on paper. IQ does offer you a proper camera setup with a main primary camera, which is a 15 megapixel Samsung GN5. You get a 12 megapixel, uh, you know, telephoto 2x camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide and a 16 megapixel camera on the front for selfies. The OnePlus 10T, on the other hand, actually comes with the same setup that you get on the Realme 9 Pro Plus, which costs half the price of the OnePlus 10T. Yes, I'm talking about that 50 plus 8 plus 2 setup that's present on this one as well. Of course, with that IMX. 766 primary sensor. Now for the camera comparison part of this review, I've made a separate video once again. I prefer doing that because then I can go into depth over there and not make this video very long. So that link should pop up right now. So go and check the camera comparison over there. But if you are impatient and really want to know what the results are, then the iQOO 90 definitely has better cameras than the OnePlus 10 t now, coming to the performance on both these phones, of course, they come with the latest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip with LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 type storage. So yeah, it's all top of the line on these phones. And of course, we've tested the 8 Plus Gen 1 on the ASUS ROG Phone 6 Pro, which is a proper gaming phone. So it had a massive cooling system going out there. So the performance was completely different from a mainstream phone. Now, these two phones also have proper vapor cooling chambers inside. So yeah, so the performance on the 8 Plus Gen 1 is all almost equally good and it's based on TSMC's 4 nanometer process which is definitely better than Samsung's process. Now let's start off with synthetic benchmarks. These are just numbers. So for those who care about these numbers, the Antutu score on the iQ90 breaches, you know, the 1 million mark and it is better than the OnePlus 10T. We tried multiple times but we couldn't go beyond 1 million even with high performance mode on and putting Antutu in the game mode. It just couldn't, uh, you know, cross 1 million which the iQ90 did. But what matters more is throttling performance and we ran a 40 core uh, you know 30 minute test on both these phones and the numbers are very similar once again as you can see from the you know screenshots on your screen right now although when it comes to throttling performance i like the gpu throttling performance that the 3d mark wireless stress test can achieve and the numbers are kind of telling in a way that you know what i noticed is that in high performance mode when you run the 3d mark wireless stress test the oneplus 10t gets really hot and it crashes whereas the iQOO 90 runs it till the end but it doesn't get really hot either so that's a good thing now in comparison when you run it in balanced mode the numbers are extremely in favor of the oneplus 10t where i got a stability score of 90 percent over 90 percent which is fantastic and it was much lower on the iQOO 90 which is which was hovering around the 50 55 to 60 mark for the stability scores and that is not very reassuring but what i noticed is that the iQOO 90 didn't get as hot as the oneplus 10t did even in the balanced mode and the temperature rise was not too much so essentially what i feel is that iQOO is trying to sort of throttle the performance so that the phone doesn't get too hot whereas the oneplus is actually letting it get hot and not throttling performance as much but in gaming what i noticed is that the synthetic benchmarks and the throttle numbers don't really translate especially if you're gaming only for half an hour which is what i do so i play apex legends generally at a stretch for half an hour like a couple of rounds and what i noticed is both these phones didn't get hot and they didn't throttle performance either basically no frame drops whatsoever but if you're an intensive gamer and if you stretch your gaming to you know say one hour or more then the oneplus 10t will definitely start getting hot around the mid frame and around the camera region so will the iq90 but not as much as the oneplus 10t but what the iq90 will do is probably drop a few frames more than the oneplus 10t the oneplus 10t is stabler for longer gaming sessions but gets hot the iq90 doesn't get as hot but you know does throttle performance slightly so which one of these two gaming performance or styles would you prefer let me know in the comment section below but regardless the 8 plus gen 1 is leagues leagues better than the 8 gen 1 and it's a far better chip so whether you're buying the iq90 or the oneplus 10t the gaming performance is going to be so so good that you're going to be really happy with it now that is about main performance, but when you're talking about network performance, you get support for Wi-Fi 6, you get support for Bluetooth 5.3, you get support for 4G plus carrier aggregation on both these phones, and the 4G call quality was fantastic. I faced no call drops on both these phones whatsoever, and the earpiece quality is really good. The proximity sensor also works really well, so no problem whatsoever. Now when it comes to 5G, you get support for 11 5G bands on the OnePlus 10T compared to 9 on the iQ90, but that's enough for when you know 5G lands in India, and which is hopefully really soon, so I'm waiting to see how that changes things. 
Now coming to the battery life, the iQOO 90 has a slightly smaller 4700mAh battery compared to the 4800mAh unit inside the OnePlus 10T. Now of course the OnePlus 10T comes with 150W charging speeds which is actually 125W for the folks watching from the US. In comparison, the iQOO 90 has 120 watt charging speeds. Now, these are crazy charging speeds. Uh, you can charge the iQOO 90 from 0 to 100 in 21 minutes and, uh, you know, the OnePlus 10 from 0 to 100 in 19 minutes. That's just too fast for me, if you ask me. I'm good with good enough with 65 watt. Do you guys like faster charging? Let me know in the comment section below. But I don't think that is the direction that OnePlus should have taken with the OnePlus 10 They could have either added wireless charging because, of course, you're paying 50,000 rupees for a phone or they could have given a better camera setup at least iq is doing that with the camera setup now when it comes to the battery life on both these phones snapdragon 8 plus gen 1 is very good at power efficiency which is something that we noticed with the asus rog phone 6 as well and the iq 90 actually is slightly better at battery performance compared to the oneplus 10t what i noticed is that i got about six hours to six and a half hours of screen on time on my heavy usage whereas the oneplus 10t gave me about five and a half hours to six hours so half an hour difference this could also be because of the display on the OnePlus 10T which could be drawing more power because it's an E4 AMOLED and it's a 10-bit panel. So maybe it's drawing more power compared to the iQOO 90 but that's just conjecture. What I notice is in general is that the iQOO 90 has slightly better battery life compared to the OnePlus 10T. But then again, it's unis bees ka farak like they say in Hindi so it doesn't really match matter that much. Now, software on both these phones. The OnePlus 10T is running on Oxygen OS 12 based on Android 12. And you get support for three years of, you know, OS upgrades and four years of security upgrades. And it's running the latest July security patch. Now, the iQOO 90, of course, has FunTouch OS 12 based on Android 12. Again, three plus four years uh, promised from iQOO. And of course, this one is also running the July security patch. But you know what? When it comes to the software experience, now that I'm a huge fan of Oxygen OS these days, but when compared to FunTouch OS, it's just faster, smoother, slicker in general and therefore it just feels more fun and you know far more premium to use on a phone that's costs about rupees 50,000. And the OnePlus 10T has very little bloat where there's just one app extra on it and that is Netflix. The iQOO 90 has a lot of pre-installed app including something like you know Baiju's which I don't see a reason why it should exist on a phone that costs rupees 50,000 and uh, you know the iQ also has Vivo's browser which drops notifications from time to time if you don't switch them off so yeah so that's not a very premium experience in my you know uh, opinion so if you're looking for a phone for better software experience OnePlus 10T over iQ90 anyway I know Marcus Brownlee already used this word to describe the OnePlus 10T and I couldn't think of a better word so I'm going ahead with it. The OnePlus 10T is definitely the most generic OnePlus phone that OnePlus has made in a long long time. It is mundane and formulaic to a level where it feels really boring. Now the good thing about the OnePlus 10T is that it is definitely very powerful thanks to uh, you know the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 inside. You also got uh, you know great haptic feedback good stereo speakers and very very fast charging and of course a clean software too but where the iq 90 has the oneplus 10t beat is in camera performance because all of the other parameters are almost equally good on the iq 90 as well only if iq had better software it would be an easy recommendation for me but since a lot of people care about the software experience on their phones i think that for those who do the OnePlus 10T is better, but for those who are okay with living with the FunTouch OS experience, then you know the iQOO 90 would be the better choice by default because the camera performance is also so so good. So, will you prefer performance plus clean software or performance plus great cameras? That's what you need to decide. So yeah, so it's either the OnePlus 10T or the iQOO 90. Which one? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Ashad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.